Damn business. Okay, EJ, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> you really, you have a radio voice. Um, I've been told that a couple of shit. I mean, yeah, yeah, you I, should, because we were recording, I, so it's good for the sound. Um, yeah, I've been told that a couple of times, but I think anytime there's like a mic or a camera, I try and play it up just a little bit more. <laughs> Have you ever thought about having your own podcast? Um, Cause you have good musical taste. Whenever yeah. I visit you, you always have good music playing. Um, I I've thought about it, um, but I don't know if I could like hold. You know, would anybody listen to it? Like that's that's the fear. It's just like I I, I could have fun doing it, um, but I don't know if anybody else would care. But maybe it's not about that. Right? Maybe it's not about that. Uh, my, my dad um, used to work in radio. Oh really? Yeah. What did he do? Um, he did. He was like a man, uh, person or like personality, like DJ. Yeah, okay. I think he started out um, doing parties or something. But um, when I was younger, he used to just come in, um, uh, like come from work and just like spin records and like hang out, and play music all the time. Oh nice! Yeah. I think you should do a podcast. No, you can hold on to it. I, I think people. I would listen to it. I think other people would listen to it as well. Um, and also, it's like, it goes with your, you do performance art. Yeah, 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 I make performances. So I guess there, there is, there's like a, yeah, a performative element in that. There's something like, I don't know, to be honest, I just like, I like people watching me do stuff. Like, I don't know, I like it, like, I like the attention in this weird way, you know? Just like, I don't know. But I couldn't like act or anything, that's just like, you have to like you have to get out of who you are to be somebody else, and I kind of just like I don't know to be me. Okay, so let me ask you about social media then. Do you feel like because with the performative stuff, there's like this sort of this like interpersonal sort of need that's being satisfied? Do you use a lot? I know there's lots of performance artists who use like their Twitter accounts and like Tumblr and Instagram almost as a performative piece as well. And I know you have, you're you represented on all these social media platforms. Do you use that as part of your performance? I do, yeah. I think about, I was just saying a few minutes ago, um, I think about Instagram kind of um, as like, like my, my Instagram feed is like an art project, you know? Like I'm, I'm going around my, my life and snapping photos of things, but the collection of the photos and like my, my comments below and my engaging with the people who comment is like all like, it's like kind of, you know, I, th I think about it a lot. I put a lot of work into it. Uh, so it's kind of, I mean, it's not totally constructed and fabricated, but I do think about it as an extension of my practice. Um, almost in, in, in like testing images out too, like what kind of aesthetics will, um, uh, like fit together and uh, elicit response. Um, so I'm thinking about, like, yeah, I'm thinking about it as like, um, and some of the shit I say on there too, like some of the stuff I say is like not, I wouldn't actually say that in real life. Uh, it's just kind of like playing with the form. That's what social media is for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so does that mean you're basing people's responses on like how many retweets or comments mm -hmm. you get? Like if you get no like response, do you delete it? Oh yeah, that makes me that, yeah, absolutely. Like in a hot second, there's like my heart starts racing. I'm just like, wait, but what does this mean? Like, like nobody's into this, All right. And then I can't have something out in the world that like you know that nobody's like endorsing. That might sound really, I don't know, shallow or something. No, but you know? there's um, I saw a picture once on Instagram, and it was like poking fun at Instagram. The photo was like number of likes and it was zero, but then there was a little eyeball thing. It was like number of looks and it was like 99 or something like 100. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, people troll, they, they yeah. look and they don't comment. And... Which is messed up. I mean, but I do that though. So you're, okay. you're guilty of it. it. I'm guilty of it, I get it. Okay. So we have your website up, and kudos to you for having a bomb artist website. It's really nice. And the first image, which I really love, I actually was at this performance that happened at Fort Frazier. And um, I remember I knew about the performance, but I didn't know exactly what the performance was or what it was going to be. 
And I got there, and a bunch of people are in the room, similar to this, and we're all standing, I mean, we're all sitting there and staring at you, and you're staring back. And it was very intense. So can you explain to us what this performance was? That I'll actually, there's some other photos I see. Um, what was the name of that performance? Complicity Yeah, that would go. Um, yeah, so that, that performance was, um, it's something that I tested out when I was in grad school at UCLA. Um, so it, it started off as kind of like a, um, just a, like a rough sketch of an idea where um, part of the grad school critique is that like every week there'd be someone presenting their work to like, you know, um, a group of peers and the professor, like it was, my, it was my turn, we had already been talking about um, someone's paintings for like two hours and then everyone was going to take a cigarette break, like maybe get like a bag of burritos or something, like I don't know, and then like come back and it was my turn to present. Uh, but the night before I had decided that like, um, instead of like performing for an audience that was like attentive and like wanting to see something happen, um, I was just gonna like walk into the room and just like pee on myself uh, and then stand there and sit down and then just like see what people thought about that. So it's kind of like an experiment, you know, instead of like coming up and doing like a, um, a song and dance for people to sort of like, um, uh, you know, just like pick apart. Mm -hmm. I kind of wanted to just like you know, kind of just mess with the whole grad school like critique setup. Uh, and so I drank a bunch of water before and then just peed on myself. Um, and so this was like a, a version like 2.0 of that. Um, and since it was in a gallery in Culver City and since it was something that was like invitations were sent out for, I wanted to play with the structure of like the performance artist or like the performer and like that audience performer uh you know setup i mean like kind of like you know we're mm -hmm. we're kind of doing mirror chairs and we're like here and that set up, sets up some kind of dynamic that i was interested in playing around with so i set up those chairs set up the platform as if like okay this this thing like this is um like something's gonna happen here you don't know what but it's gonna happen and i went up stood up there um for maybe like 10 minutes, 15 minutes in silence and just stared out at everyone and then started peeing on myself. Um, and then remained on the platform for about uh, like two hours. Oh my god, you were there for two hours? Yeah, there? just like in pissy pants. <laughs> I think I stayed for 45 minutes of it. Um, but what I remember from this performance was like the intensity <laughs> of like your stare, like your look. You almost, it was like you were in this sort of like, um, you were in this, you, you were just in another space than everybody else that was in the room. And it was really intense. And like looking at you, like we started to feel like the, it started getting really warm in the room and it felt like the energy, like the heat was like getting turned up and like actually none of that was happening. I mean, maybe it was getting warm because there were a lot of people in there, but it was like you were sort of like in control of like the atmosphere of that huh. space just by your gaze. Mm -hmm. And this was even before the peeing part started. It was really right. sort of like very specific. Yeah, I mean, because well, like, um, I, sometimes the things that I, I get these ideas and I'm just like, yeah, that's it. like, all right, and then I'll take notes, that sounds amazing, I'll do that. And then when it's like time to execute the ideas, I'm just like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, why, <laughs> why am I doing this? Because like, it is very intense. It's like yeah. very overwhelming. And I remember looking out at people and like, at like their furrowed brows everywhere. And I'm just like, oh, like, I'm like, I'm doing this to people. <laughs> why? Um, and I think I think um, that I don't I don't always think it's about like controlling people, um, but yeah, my my a lot of my performance work does tend to be really um, 
aggressive in that way and like really sort of um, tense. Uh, and I think a lot of the times I've, I've sort of, uh, um, like my reasoning I think is sort of just kind of like reflecting back uh, what I get, you know? It's like moving around the world yeah. sometimes, like life is pretty crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Did anybody talk to you? While I was up there? Yeah. No. Not a single word, like nothing. It was just kind of, um, you know, people, I think, uh, adhered to their sort of role as like audience member, um, which was something that I was kind of, I was like, well, how long can I, how long can we stand here, you know? It was like a, like a standoff. Um, and I didn't, I didn't know how it was going to end, and I was just kind of curious about if someone was going to like, uh, you know, break that invisible wall, and no one did. But there was a distance because we were on that pedestal. It was a good four feet. Yeah. So we were set up for that. Right. As like performer audience. Yeah. So when you do get um, interaction from audience, does your performance tend to change in the moment, or do you kind of stick with what you're doing? Um, I it changes, and I'm pretty open to it going like I'm pretty open to it changing because um, you know I think when you I think when you put yourself out there in in such a way and like you're like you're dealing with your body and then presenting your body you know to other bodies like they're, they're, and I don't rehearse anything I don't really give like I don't do test runs I think it's really important for me in my practice that like I'm experiencing the thing for the first time along with everybody else. Like that's like, uh, that's really important to me. And so when someone um, uh, uh, comes in and breaks that space, I'm just kind of like, well, uh, all right, like now let's take it here, wherever that may be. So when you were like the trance mm -hmm. or the meditation, there was no like emotional preparation that you plug yourself into or mental preparation you just jumped in yeah. Or did you tune everybody up, or did you like? Oh, no. oh, for this, um, I was no, I was like looking directly like into the eyes of like every person in that room for and like hold, and trying to hold uh, that gaze um, for as long as what felt comfortable. Um, and I think maybe that's you know part of why that was so intense because I, I wasn't like uh, I wasn't up there like in my own world like performing. I was like I'm here with you. We're in this right now, and there's your in. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and so that's, and I was interested in that because like, you know, we see performers and it's like we go and we're like passive audience members and like a thing happens before us and there is that distance, but I, I, I was interested in seeing like, what would happen if I brought this like really human, visceral act to this thing and just like locked people into that with me? What are you gonna do? You gonna say something? <laughs> you gonna come up here too? And just wanted to see how long I can stretch that out. How did that uncomfortable energy from them feel to you? Like oh, obviously yeah. you can see, like she said, you felt the temperature change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you take all that? After about thirty minutes, I broke down and started crying, and it was just like in and out of like tears, and I would collect myself and like wipe my snotty nose on my pants, and then like. I would be cool and like breathe deeply for a few minutes and then I would like look up again and just see that like everyone was like, it, like I knew that after a point I was like no one's going to say anything, no one's going to do anything, I could be up here for days and that made me really sad and so then I just started crying, you know, because I felt like, like nobody's going to come hug me, <laughs> like, I really want to hug right now, nobody's going to do that, but um, yeah, I think like as um, you know, was mentioned, like I, there was the setup was there's some distance, there's a platform, and um, when you you know set something up like that, I think you know people um, usually tend to follow the rules, and that's sort of what I was questioning. So how does it feel to kind of uh, have put yourself in this position where you're doing these intimate acts or kind of personal gestures? 
in front of strangers? Does that give you power? Like, how do you feel with that? Is mm. it healing? Um, well, that's a good question. Um, well, there is, there is, yeah, there is a power dynamic when, um, when performing, uh, when you're the one sort of like doing something and inviting people to come watch it, um, like you're sort of like orchestrating uh, um, uh, uh, an interaction, um, and but I don't, I don't necessarily think about it as like me attempting to um, gain power. Uh, but I understand that there is like a power relationship in that. Um, uh, yeah. Damn, Aaron. <laughs> Did you gain power? Did I gain power? I mean, maybe in the sense of uh, the power that one gains after. Uh, a really sort of traumatic experience. It's like a like a skin thickening, you know. Um, maybe in that sense, but yeah, I don't know. When it came to your dates, you know, what did people that change over time? You mentioned that they kind of grow eyebrows. Oh, were you just sort of taking in everybody like, out of just kind of like curiosity, or did you start to kind of channel a certain uh, yeah, I certainly kind of things back at a certain point, or, or was it something conscious or something just kind of responsible? Um, yeah, it wasn't exactly conscious. I there were moments where I had to uh, look away and just look down for maybe five to ten minutes at a time because, like, me standing up there, I realized, you know, I knew that I was bringing my own sort of energies, but, like, Everyone else, like you all, have your own sort of like rhythms and pulses that like uh, that I was receiving as well. Um, and at certain points, that became too much for me, and I had to like shut it down, close everybody else out, and like go in to, in order to continue. Um, so yeah, I think I like I was emanating some energies, but also receiving them as well. Yeah. And all the rooms. Oh, uh, my my knees were like starting to like buckle, and my back was killing me, and my feet were like because um, I didn't you know when you stand somewhere for two hours and you don't move like the body just starts to hurt, um, and so I was thinking I could go and maybe see if someone's gonna do say something, um, or I could. Um, like not continue. I felt like I, I maybe struggled enough. Like if, if like it wasn't the, the piece wasn't ever about like a breakdown. You know, it wasn't about like falling apart at the seams. So I kind of was like, okay, I think like this feels okay to end here. It's all intuitive. Really. Wait, so how did it end um, after two hours? After two hours and after some like. You know, neck bends and rolls, and like freaking out and crying. Um, I just like walked, walked off the platform, and that was the first time all evening that, um, uh, other than those moments of like you know bowing my head to to recollect myself, like when I walked down that aisle to the end of the gallery in the back, I didn't look at a single soul. I just like couldn't. It was just like too, way too much to try and like engage with people at that moment um, and it was it was like yeah it was like that was the end it was just this like was like quite literal walk of shame you know? how many people were still there because we see this is like when it was a full yeah. house um i'd say people people started to like rotate because i think again like um uh you know when when things are set up like that people are like oh shit like can i dip out right now like i kind of have to go but like to be rude and so there was all of that happening and then once like one person left that sort of gave license to other people to like okay you can leave now you can come and go as you please whatever um, so I think by the end of it it wasn't that crowded but I'd say like a good um, maybe I don't know like 60 70 percent of those chairs were still filled mm -hmm. and with like completely new people also you know? mm -hmm. 
did it change your outlook on life? Like, was there something about this performance that really changed how you looked at people, how you felt about people, like, judging you or being judgmental? Um, yeah, I, it did change how I felt about people. I was like, um, if somebody is struggling, um, there are a lot of, uh, a lot of reasons that would keep somebody from intervening. Um, and I, I, I can't ever know what those reasons are or how to predict them, but um, there are structures in place that like, I think keep people from helping each other. Um, and that made me really, yeah, kind of bummed Yeah. Um, so you talked about how you felt like you were saying that your body was starting to break down at a certain point. Um, can you kind of get into that a little more? Because that seems to be a phase of your work kind of pushing your body into you can't do your work. And so can you kind of talk about why that centers around mm -hmm. Um, I, uh, I grew up going to Catholic school, and I think for anyone else who's down there, um, uh, there's a, um, uh, this, like, the idea of, like, penance and, like, working through something through repetition and just kind of, like, like, really, really going through it, um, almost to like work it out of you. It was like, like sometimes I, I joke and, and call my performances, like after I'm done, I'm like, oh yeah, I'll just like exercise some demons. And, and that's something that um, uh, I think when I push my body to the limits and when I, when I push my mental to the limits, I have like new boundaries for what I can withstand, you know, things that I never thought, um, haven't run a marathon yet, but I imagine that it might be similar to like, damn, I didn't know I could do 20, 25.6 or 26.2. Like, I didn't know I could run a marathon. Uh, and so these are, these, these are kind of like, uh, um, like setting, setting a boundary for myself, being like, I don't know, like, I don't know if I can do that. That seems dangerous or like, um, or too raw, or I can't enter that emotional territory, or I can't deal with this subject matter because it's too much for me. I think to place those limits on myself and say like no, I can never do that because like that's scary or that might hurt. Um, just seems like I wouldn't be living. So I, I kind of like draw these lines, check them out for a bit, and then like hop over them and then draw another one. And through that, I think I'm like you know like learning to become more resilient in a world that um, is constantly trying to. Dim my shine. <laughs> I mean, isn't that just perception? Like, you might feel like the world is dimming and shine, but maybe it is. <laughs> but I mean, did, it, did, did you at any point think, okay, I'm spending it for two hours? Maybe I should have been here. Hmm. Hmm. Um. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, it's... I mean, do you always do that? Or was this an exercise in, I'm not going to initiate any contact and wait to see if somebody initiates it? You know what I mean? Right. No, I don't, um, it's not always as um, uh, passive. There are, there, are, there are performances where I'm, um, uh, I am sort of like projecting out into the world like kind of like reaching out and, and yeah, initiating contact, but I think, um, yeah, in previous performances, like it hasn't always been like, like the contact that I'm initiating isn't, yeah, to be quite honest, like it's never really a, a warm sort of inviting contact. It's more like, you feel this, huh? You there? Um, and, and I think again, it's, um, uh, I went, so I went to this, um, this talk with Kara Walker and Ava DuVernay um, at the Writers Guild uh, Theater like maybe last year, and uh, Ava um, posed the question, so you know, a lot of, like, um, a lot of your, um, you know, the people who, who criticize you say that like, you're dealing with like, really um, like, tough and dark subject matter and like, you're confrontational and you're like, stirring the pot and like, all these things, but you've been doing this now for like, uh, you know, like, 
over 20 years, like, what do you have to say to your critics now? And like, her response was just like, you know, I make art about what I feel, and sometimes what I feel is pretty monstrous. And I thought that that was just like, oh, yeah, like, I, I get that. Um, and so when I'm making, um, I'm sort of like, you know, reflecting kind of like what's bubbling up. And it's not all dark, like, I like puppies and stuff. You know? <laughs> Like, hugs are cool, so like, uh, yeah, but sometimes, a lot of the time, it comes out um, uh, in a way that's seemingly uh, sort of self-destructive, but um, is pretty cathartic. Is that conscious or subconscious? Um, it, it, was, it was subconscious for a long time, and even when I tried to like, go the opposite route, um, there would still be like a darker underbelly. Um, so now, like I've been, been doing it for like, uh, maybe, like, I don't know, making these types of performances for like, uh, like seven, eight years now that it's like not as conscious as it was. So like, you know, things are, I'm like trying to shift things to sort of, um, yeah, I think it's important to have like generative spaces as well to counter all of this. What's the most repulsive thing you've ever said or ever did? Oh, in my performance, I was like, oh, man. Yeah, that, that brackets it a little bit. Um, it's like, we're really getting personal. <laughs> um, repulsive. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, um, I don't, I don't, I don't think I want to, I don't think of any, I don't want to think of anything as like, like repulsive. Um, I've done some stuff that like it's hard to sit with for some people and even myself, but I don't know. They're all kind of like they're all they're all kind of hard afterwards. You know, I go through it. I lay in bed. Like some of my friends who are here, you know, that like I've called you after a performance and we've like eaten bacon waffles at three a.m. You know? Like because I need to just get away and like shut it out because this stuff is like really, I'm I'm bringing up some stuff that's hard to look at. You know, even for me. I also saw part of this performance here that I pulled up, which was at the ALAC Fair. Mm -hmm. And you were like in this tuxedo. You had just ended it right when I was like getting to the fair. And you'd been singing all night. It sounded like some Beyonce songs or something when I came in. Um, but then I remember like reading an article about it or whatever, and it was like, you were like making up these phrases as you were going, and a lot of them was like intentionally like poking, not, I wouldn't say like poking fun, but like you were very intentionally speaking to the audience that was at the fair. Not like a specific individual, but like people in attendance and a type of person in attendance, and like this sort of, I didn't see this one, but was there like a response to what this performance was? Oh, you mean like audience response? Mm -hmm. Were um, people interacting with you? Because it seems like this uh, is a bit more like you're a lounge singer right. and um, the intensity in this one doesn't, it's a different sort of tone. It's like the one that I have previously showed that where you peed on yourself. <laughs> um, but this one feels more like maybe someone wouldn't know that you're a, perfor a performance artist. Maybe they thought you were just hired for the VIP party at this fair, and you really right. are like a lounge singer, wedding singer. Yeah, that's funny because the the caption for this photo on like in the Getty Images ar archive was like singer EJ Hill, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, like I could like maybe I could work on an album and like try and run with this for a little bit. But, um, <laughs> But yeah, so because it very much looks like, and when we started, um, people, like there were a bunch of people at the bar with like their backs turned, it was like, it was a fair, it was an art fair, it was a big party, um, and there were like, it, 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 it looks like, it looks like I was hired to like entertain. Um, and uh, yeah, and again, I wanted to like, you know, kind of fuck with the structure a little bit of like, the entertainer, um, because I, I um, uh, 
going into those spaces um, to to sort of like you know titillate and like just excite um, wasn't. I have trouble. I have. I mean, I was. I think I have trouble um, with like rigid setups where things like don't like really get challenged and um, people just like accepting things as is. So with this performance, uh, it was around it was around the time that that Beyonce album dropped and I was on it super hard and like really excited and um, uh, particularly uh, for the conversation. Um, uh, around her as like a feminist and the album is like a feminist text and like really interested in like the dialogue um, surrounding that album uh, and it was I, I've often I've often said that like it was finally like after going to college and like going to grad school and like knowing really strong smart intelligent uh, feminist writers thinkers artists activists um, in like an academic circle but not mm, like not still not quite feeling like that space was um, open to me, but then it took like Beyonce and this album for me to be like, wait, I understand this language. This is the language of like TLC and, and Vogue and Maya, like uh, all of these like something that I was very familiar with growing up, like rewatching the like Are You That Somebody video, like trying to like you know like get the moves down. Um, like all of that felt very familiar and so uh, there were a lot of times where I can talk about like you know my blackness my queerness and feel like I'm just like being stomped on um, but then it took a friend to be like wait dude but like like you like yeah you like you're a man and like you have all these privileges that like uh, I'm not afforded I'm just like oh shit you're right and that's like it, like, it was so, it was like so simple, but like I can't believe, and I was like so ashamed that I like hadn't really considered it before. That like, yeah, there, are, there, there are all of these things that, uh, 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 as again, like a black queer man, that like I, I feel just like so shit on, but like, but I never really think about my uh, privilege as like a man because I'm not forced to, um, and so it took a whole lot of conversations for me to sort of like start unpacking that stuff and then I thought like in this moment I'm working through uh, all of these ideas that are uh, pretty new for me um, and I wanted to work that out in public and I was like what better way to talk about privilege and access than at an art fair with people um, a lot of money. <laughs> so uh, I put on my tux and um, I sang songs off the top of my head just based on like all of the things that I've been thinking about slash reading about. So I'm like, you know, uh, loosely quoting uh, bell hooks but also singing about um, uh, my own uh, forays into like love, love loss and uh, my blackness, my maleness, uh, all of these things that are just like mixed up into one complicated body is being like poured out for like these you know really rich people <laughs> who are just like this trick is great um, <laughs> so that one was a funny one yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was it's interesting we all shared your sentiments uh and then the other one that i wanted to show was this one which I also saw this one too. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan. Um, this one was really like, they all have an intensity, but this was more like laborious. Like you were like literally exerting intense like energy with uh, jumping rope for I don't know how long. When I arrived at the opening, when I left, you were just jumping. Row and uh, this was at this was at Commonwealth, right? Mm -hmm. So um, for people who didn't see it, it, it was this fence that was installed, and um, opening night, you were just there jumping rope on this fence, and that's my mom back there. Oh, that's your mom. I remember that. I remember that. Um, what was this performance about? And how do you prepare for the duration of a performance that's like this? Mm. Um, well, I'll start with that last question first, because I think 
I think I've been pre preparing for this stuff like my entire life, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I have been preparing to endure <laughs> who knows what every single day. Um, and so I feel like I already have that in me to like go and go. And when I think I can't go anymore, I'm like still going. Like that's, I think that that's just like part of like being a person alive in the world. Um, mm -hmm. And this piece in particular um, was from a very specific childhood memory of again being at um, the school, St. Michael's Elementary School, had like Manchester and Vermont, um, tiny school, and I was there from like 1990 to 99. Um, and I was the kid who had, you know, nothing but like female friends, and all of the dudes used to tease me because I like to do stuff like jump rope and hopscotch uh, and like braid girl's hair at recess, and like the, the, the nuns. And my teachers, um, I would get in trouble for jumping rope sometimes because it like wasn't like, you know, little boys didn't jump rope. And like I would get, um, uh, there was like one parent teacher conference that was like about grades or something. But then at one point, like, um, uh, like Sister Margaret and I was like, looked over to my dad and she's like, he's jumping rope again. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> And then my dad sort of like looks at me, just kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> so like this is all like this stuff is coming from like this is coming from some real shit, you know? Like you're like this is all memories that are like stored in my in my body, um, and so sometimes the only way for me to get them out um, is to just like really really do it, you know? Be like. I'm about to jump this rope right now. <laughs> and I'm going to do it until I can't stand anymore. Um, and so there was a point, probably seventh, eighth grade, toward the end of elementary school, where all of my friends started to stand at the fence during recess um, and just check out the dudes driving by. Uh, and like, basically, like, oh yeah, like he was hot too. Like, oh, you see him? And they had like nicknames for certain dudes that would like walk by at certain times of the day. Um, and so I couldn't really, I couldn't just be like, yeah, you see that dude with the ponytail? Like, hell yeah. But, um, cause I wasn't quite there yet. I couldn't, I wasn't comfortable being like as open with my like desires. And I was like 12. And so they, like, they're sort of like, that was their natural uh, progression. Like little girls start to like boys uh, and then little boys start to like girls. And I was sort of like caught in this middle space of just being like, wait, this like feels weird and I don't actually know what's happening and so I, I was alone a lot toward those um, later years and uh, um, anyone who's like you know wanted to play double dutch but it's just like you and your friend like it's you you get your two rows any time to the fence and like you don't need a third friend it's just like resourceful mm -hmm. uh, so I took that and kind of like pared it down even more um, and so this was just kind of like musings on like solitude and loneliness um, but also a very specific childhood memory um, and I jumped rope until I couldn't stand anymore. Um, and my clothes were about, um, my clothes were soaking wet. And I think at one point, as I tried to get the rope over my head, I just kind of like fell over and just collapsed. Um, and that, um, that piece was when people like, uh, um, like immediately people were like taking off my shirt and like feeding me water and, um, uh, uh, massaging my feet, it was like, I did not expect that at all. Like, I thought people were going to, like, keep their distance, but, like, um, people showed up and, like, helped me. Why do you see him giving up when you jump It's happy energy, right? Yeah. So, I mean, naturally, you know, the people who grab it's more so than if you're just, you know, winning yourself and right. getting nice there and there. I guess, yeah. I guess one is less inviting, you're right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how, how old were you when this was happening, right? Um, and how big is your family? Do you have sisters? Um, my family, I have a pretty big extended family, some of which are here tonight. Thanks, y'all, for coming to support. Um, but uh, it's, I have a pretty big family. My, my mom's side of the family, my mom is number five of ten children. Um, and so, 
I have like, so many cousins here uh, in LA. So I didn't I didn't grow up with like siblings, but my cousins and my aunts, uh, that was like, you know, that was the fam. Uh, that is the fam. Um, and you didn't jump up with them when you do that thing. Why are you doing this? I mean, I don't know. Um, I, well, I don't know. I spent, we spent, I spent a lot of time, you know, at school and then like at the after school program. I saw my family like on weekends and stuff, but I don't, I don't really remember jumping rope with anybody. I think we just kind of like ran around. Um, but like, I think when it's with family, um, when it's with family, uh, that's like, that's like home, you know? So it doesn't feel like, um, at least it didn't feel for me, uh, um, like I had, well, here's a crazy thing. So there's, there's family here, but I don't ever think I've actually said the words I'm gay to anyone in my family. I just assumed that it was something that like was known because I was that kid that was like TLC posters all over my room. And just like, <laughs> like I got to a point where I was just like, I don't need to say anything, right? Like they, they just like, no, but, um, but this might very well be, this is the first time I think I've said that out loud to like, and anyone in my family. So like, holy shit, what a night. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I think because of that, I felt like I don't have to, like, I, like those rules weren't really there because like family was just kind of like, it, it, it was the space that like, I could be who I was and like it was already accepted and we didn't have to have a conversation about it. Or I mean, I don't know, I, I, I never thought that I had to have like a conversation about it. Um, but maybe that was doing a disservice to like the people in my family. I don't know. Maybe we're gonna talk about that later tonight. <laughs> <laughs> when you coming up with your or you're conjuring up these performances or these uh, do you discuss it or do you bounce off any of your people in your inner circle or your friends or yeah. or do they all suggest it and you're like, nah, nah, nah. Um, yeah, I think my friends are like that's probably like one of my most important uh, sets of like art materials. Like that's like my friends are the people who like talk me back from the edge, you know? Cause like sometimes I'm like, yeah, I got this idea. Like I'm gonna roll down this hill, but I'm gonna be holding like a full length mirror the whole time. And, like, <laughs> like, like uh, what if you like roll down with like bubble wrap, you know? <laughs> Like they really, they, they really pull through for me. So I'm like, I'm always bouncing ideas off of people, and a lot of the times my ideas are formed through conversation, through casual conversation with my friends. So like, it's 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 a lot of the time it's not even like I'm sitting down like trying to think of like the next art piece. It's just kind of like having dinner and drinks, and that spawns something, and, and then I go from there. Maybe from like an inspiration. Yes, yeah, absolutely. EJ, I have a question. Uh, I have a question about uh, different types of spaces that you perform in, uh, in different kinds of protective arenas, you know, the gallery space is one form of protective arena, you know who the audience mm -hmm. is, uh, so you should be. There was a piece that you did in Chicago that really intrigued me where you were on display. Uh, Oh, uh, yeah. You were with a partner, mm -hmm. uh, and so you were in public space. Mm -hmm. Space different than a gallery space. If you could iterate the what difference between um, uh, I'm tired. You know, uh, how uh, you see yourself in relation to the public or your viewers. Gallery situation versus a more public situation that's not protected. Right. Um, yeah, that's an that's an amazing question. I have um I I get so used to performing in galleries because that's like um, you know it's like the musician performs on a stage. It, it just like becomes part of like the the, the language like. Um, but whenever, whenever I'm not in as protected of a space, I, I do realize that potential. Um, so this is a piece um, I have been mentioning. Um, do you feel more vulnerable and less a sense of power or more vulnerability than 
Um, I went through, yeah, both of those. Very vulnerable because we, uh, this was a collaboration with uh, this artist, Colin Presser, where we, um, we lay in a bed together in a window for 24 continuous hours. So from 11 a.m. on a Friday to 11 a.m. on a Saturday. Um, and the image of two men in bed, uh, you know, uh, the image of like an interracial pair of men in bed, like, can, um, can really anger a lot of people. Uh, and so I was, we were very vulnerable because the only thing separating us from anyone who wished to do us harm was like, <coughs> yeah, and something that, you know, I mean, come on. Uh, we were on edge the entire time. Uh, but also, um, also felt quite empowered because for every, um, you know, for every person that came to scream at us or like bang on the window and tell us how disgusting we were, um, there were about like five to ten other people who would come and give us thumbs up and like, just, you know, come and watch us for like a while and just look and, and yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was a little bit of both. So I think when performing outside of gallery spaces where everyone who comes in is kind of, um, you know, more or less like, uh, uh, some, someone who, what's that? Yeah, someone who's for it, who knows what they're getting into, um, Performing in the streets, performing in public, you're, you're like really opening yourself up to like anything, anything at all, and that's that can be really terrifying, but also quite exhilarating. I have a question. Do you think that's like a form of pedagogy, like um, I have like a pretty community with Flash. Uh, it's not a number who like. Uh, he's guided by this teacher who's like very um, belligerent, I guess. Like his method of teaching, like he's like yelling at the kids all the time, like making them cry and like all these things. All these things. But do you think like something like this is better kind of in the long run because you, um, I guess, like strengthen yourself and like see up front, like right there, like the opinions, the different opinions that you're gonna have, like you know. Yeah, no, yeah. totally. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I do have like pedagogical interests. Um, and when I think of pedagogy, I think of, of it as like a, an even transfer. Mm -hmm. So I don't really like thinking about like someone like standing up and being like, I know everything, so I'm going to teach you like what I know. I think it's like a, a, a sort of like um, uh, an exercise in discovery for like both parties. And so when I'm, when I'm doing these things, yeah, I am. I, I'm, interested in learning about uh, myself, other people, again, like what I can withstand, but, um, you know, I, through conversations with um, people after these performances, like, I know that sometimes, like, other people are, they're taking away some stuff as well, um, I, would, I would hope, you know, which, you know, again, like, I'm able to talk to some after, and, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely about like learning some stuff. I know um, we had a question here. I wanted to get back to you before. Like, yeah, I didn't want to. No, it's okay. Thank you very much. Um, I was about the, the image where you jump in the road. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, you might have already said in the talk, I knew, but what role do your ancestors play? Mm -hmm. And when you're so vulnerable, you can open yourself up as a channel. Mm -hmm. And if you were not careful, that stuff you say, and I know you say you have bacon waffles and stuff. Yeah. But so. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good memory. <laughs> I think I'm going to put bags of But what happens, has something like that happened where you've been totally entranced? Mm -hmm. And um, what do you do to come back? Because mm -hmm. really, this is spiritual work. Yeah. We, once you take the ego out of you, you're being used. For sure. And so, how do you? Deal with that when, in addition to the baby mom. <laughs> how do I come back? How do you come back? And how do you even allow the process to happen? Because as artists, we can stop it. Uh -huh. We can try to stop it. Yeah. So what is your practice? Does this make sense? Yeah, no, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Um, wow, how do I come back and stop it from like, from kind of just like wilding out, right? Mm -hmm. um, so how do you obedient to the voices and the messages? Mm. 
Wow. Yeah, okay. So, similar to what I was saying about when it was time to walk off the, the platform, there's like, um, these works for me um, are never about like, um, yeah, it's about struggle and I'm, I'm, I'm addressing like uh, pain and like all these things, but I, I, don't, I don't ever want to like get too close to something that I'm like, that I won't be able to return from, you know? Like I'm not, I'm not interested in that. And so there's like, I'm, I'm, I, I wanna like, I wanna toe the line and I want to like see the other side and like look over it, but like I, I have so much work to do. You know, I, like we all have like so much work to do, and I think when in, to answer your question about how to stop it, it's when I feel that I'm getting way too close to something that um, that could ruin me, um, and I'm and and um, oh, I'm not, I'm not, I don't. Yeah, I'm not done yet. I don't want to be ruined, and so I have. Uh, I think I have maybe like a like a, a, a fight or flight response or something that can like use um, use being able to dissociate and like float and like get to places almost like a, a sort of like explorer to come back and then say, I just saw some shit, you know, <laughs> and like here's like here's what I got, here's what I saw. Um, and I think this is important for you to know this. Um, and then we can like bounce some stuff uh, back between each other um, and, 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 and build. I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm, I have like an, 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 ex, an explorer's heart, I guess, you know? I can't stay put for too long, which, um, uh, you know, which my family definitely knows. I'm like, I'm like here and then I'm there and I might show up or I might not. But, yeah, I don't know. Did that answer? I felt like that was like. I think it's gonna yeah. the answer is gonna keep unfolding. Okay. So I don't, I don't want to fully expect a full answer. So okay. thank you. Yeah, I'm you interested too. to hear what the answer will be a year from now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Right. Once you get into perception, right? I mean, you feel like you could maybe come back, but take walk through that door, and right. you can come back, right? Right. Come back differently, though. Yeah. That's true. Well, I mean. It's questionable, right? That's true. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, when you were a kid and you had your first kiss, right? It's like it was this thing that you never thought about that didn't happen. It, it feels you, you take it in, but you still remember the innocence of not having had it before. You know what I mean? As an artist, I mean, honestly, like, is this such a thing as it's wrong? Because, because if you think like that, then surely you can't be honest. Mm. Nothing is wrong here, right? I mean, whose name is on that, on that, on that, um, on the top of that? It's not my name, right? right? It's your name, right? So we're here to see you and experience you, not experience what we think you are, mm. right? Damn. It's true. <laughs> That's the only thing that's going to change us, right? Like this, this, you are a child, and you have information for us, hmm. right? Somebody's convinced us that, well, no, you know, we don't need to share the information, we don't need to pretend. No, it pertains to all of us. Right, right. And if you don't go through that door, we don't get the information. That's the bottom line. Damn. Thank you. That's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're you're making you're making a certain kind of durational performance, which in my mind takes me back to the glory days of the sixties and seventies. Are there any other days are still here? Again, we we are doing that. We're not doing that not just in the sixties and the seventies. Oh, yeah. happening now. Good, good. So I, I'm wondering about um, who who uh, are your influences? Um, who do you who do you look to for guidance in terms of artists? You know, uh, I um, 
I so I went a different route. I kind of find art. I found I found art kind of accidentally. Um, I wasn't one of those kids that was like you know drawing in his room and just being like I want to be an artist. It just sort of like maybe I don't know. I found myself in school in Columbia, uh, Columbia College in Chicago, and um, I remember seeing uh, a vid like video documentation of Chris Burton's work, and I was just like, this is art. Like this, this is crazy. Uh, but the, like something kind of turned on and I had to figure it out what like what this was and I just like went down the hole and so um, I you know Chris Burden, Marina Abramovich, uh, William Popel um, who I got the um, pleasure of meeting and working with uh, recently and I think that there's like there's a history of people um, using their bodies um, uh, you know like struggling in public um, and, and, and I think to struggle in public is one of like one of the hardest things to do um, because you're just like you're you're just like laying out all your shit all of your vulnerabilities all of your insecurities and hang-ups um, for people to just like either like ravenously consume or just like completely ignore and and and, and I think the, the struggling in public, um, uh, I, I, I lived privately for far, far too long, um, kept all sorts of secrets out of like fear and guilt and shame, and, and I think I, I, I continue to make the conscious decision to, to live openly and publicly because it, it is the only way for me to sort of like be okay with this body, uh, this mind, this heart at the end of the day. If I, if I take it into spaces and like put it in front of people and say, here, deal with it because like I have to, you know, and I'm not going to be the only one just like having to deal with this. Like you're not going to make me feel any type of way about the only body that I have. Um, you asked about influences and I'm all like, yeah, this is like, um, but yeah, those were, those were the, those were the three that kind of like, you know, um, and of course, all of their work so different. Um, but I think it, 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 at the at the root and essence, like um, it's it's struggling and it's doing it publicly. Okay, I want to talk about your paintings. Yeah, I've brought this up on your Instagram. IG, follow me at iHeartBoys. <laughs> So you're, okay, so this is a recent painting. We actually showed this here at the gallery a few months ago. And um, knowing like the kind of performative work that you do and just conversations that we have about things playing out um, in the world that we live in and also like just, just interesting encounters that you have personally because you, are in like open public spaces, whether you're like walking down the street or on the bus or, you know, going through these day to day sort of things that you do in your life. Um, and then I go see you and then you have this very like colorful uh, cloud or like sometimes I look at it and it looks like army fatigue, but like colorful mm -hmm. army fatigue. And then that was there. And so you were like, yeah, this is like, the channeling like that, what you just discussed, like all of these things into something that's just like very uh, structured and kind of beautiful and nice to look at. And where, how do you deal with like the paintings that you're making now, which have a, the last few that I've seen that you've done this year have a similar sort of color palette. Um, where are these works for you and like everything else that you do? Um, so if all of my other work that we've been talking about tonight um, was, um, you know, the new moon, um, the sort of like dark side of things, these works, like this is the full moon, you know, like this is the counter, this is the opposite side, this is like what I need to like round out the, the whole thing. Um, I, I started, um, I, 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 as I said, I found performance first and then photo and sort of like worked my way to painting, which often like seems to be kind of like the, the opposite of like, or just different, I guess, maybe not opposite. But um, I finished grad school and I was like, you know what? I'm so spent, I'm exhausted. I just, 
I want to paint. And so I started making paintings, and those are like the first paint paintings that I really ever made um, a couple years ago. And most recently, with this like new body of work, um, I started this painting when um, uh, Mike Brown was murdered, um, and I couldn't. This was like all really I had the capacity to do. I like the performances are, are coming from somewhere else, coming from a similar place of like uh, frustration and um, exhaustion. But like it felt at that time like if I if I keep making this work right now, I'm gonna lose it. It was like staring into the sun, um, and I couldn't. I just couldn't deal. So I was like, you know what? Simple shapes. Pretty colors, that's it. Like that's that's all that I want right now. That's all I need right now. Um, because anything more, I'm 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 totally gonna fall apart. And so this, like these words, um, these paintings are uh, I talk about them in terms of like um, uh, self care um, and self love and just like taking the time to go in and slow down and. Again, instead of making something that might seem destructive, like like plug really beautiful things into spaces that like might be so dark. Um, and so I I hang out in my apartment in Inglewood all day and uh, and I make paintings, um, things that I want to look at. And I was, who was I talking? To? Uh, I was talking to a friend who was over this morning. And like my, all of my windows were open, and there's like this breeze and the sun shining. I'm just like, man, like I don't think I've ever opened my blinds like this ever. Like at the, everything, like light was pouring in, and it felt so good. And like I'm looking around my apartment, and there's just like brightly colored paintings everywhere. And I was just like, this is like actually affecting the way that I feel, the way that I live. Um, and yeah, it, it was all. It was. It was like. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't premeditated. It was just kind of like, I need this. I need this right now. I need. I need something right now. I need something right now. And this. This happened to be the something. It is a beautiful painting. Okay. Yeah. Do you ever struggle with the challenge of success and failure with creating your art? Like, you know, I'm, I'm a painter. Mm -hmm. So if there's a pain that I do and I don't like, I can start over. It's like, ah, it was really it. Toss it out, cover it up, whatever. But you have the lock performance. Is there like that right, fail of this? Or is there just like, I'm doing it, whatever happens, happens. So you don't get to stop and start over. In a performance? In a performance. Yeah. As um, you can, you know, with the pain. Right. Mm -hmm. That's not what you make up. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think with the with the performance work, I don't I don't get to um, a lot of the times. Like I have a loose structure. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna jump rope and just see how long I can go. But I don't actually like once I start, I don't know where it's gonna go. Um, so I'm working out all of those ideas and things as it's happening. Um, but with the paintings, um, I work all of that stuff out privately for months. And so by the time they get here, I've already done all the crying and like staying up late at night, like, you know, watching How to Get Away with Murder and like uh, not eating or sleeping regular. Like, you know, I go through all the same things that I go through pre and post performance, but just like on my own. So like by the time people get to see this, it's the work is done. I'm like, I've, I've, I've laughed, I've cried, I've done all the things that I needed to do. Um, but so, so when that ends, um, I'm not, I'm not totally like um, as um, as concerned with like uh, like usually I like them by the end when they're done. But uh, but like it, it's um, yeah when they're done it's done. I feel like I went through the process and like the painting is the evidence of going through that process. Where the performance is. Um, uh, are very much a process, but like after the performance, um, I can't. It happened. Like it's done. It, I can't change it. This I can go back and I can't change. But um, yeah, so they, they're similar and different. But um, yeah. So you're 
chains or more formal exercises? Or are they motivated by some gritty content as well? Um, like just a band and Oh, yeah, I, an abandonment of grit. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I, I think about that sometimes because I, 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 I experience some guilt around like, um, I should be like out there with like the bullhorn and like really doing something um, when uh, I paint again not in complete abandonment, but um, because I know it's there, I live it. You know, I live, I live, um, uh, I think, going back to the, you know, the, the, the dimming the shine, like I, I, when I leave my apartment in Inglewood and like go out into the world, uh, I, I think I've, I've learned to sort of like be on guard, especially like, um, um, <clears throat> Uh, again, talking about those uh, those memories that get like stored in your body, where that people and places and social cues tell you that like you're different or not good enough, or all these things. Like I like that's all I carried that around with me. I carry around these histories with me. And then when I um, uh, you know see videos weekly of um, you know a black men being murdered by police, uh, I uh, I respond to that. Um, because my experience leaving my apartment, uh, knowing that like uh, I, this could very well be me. I, I don't know. I've been stopped. I grew up here in LA. I've been stopped and pulled over by cops like plenty of times. And it's always a terrifying experience because I actually don't know what's going to happen. Uh, and so it's not a complete abandon, abandonment of grid because I don't think living in this body, I could ever abandon it. You <laughs> This is more of just like a stepping back to take a deep breath because I know it's there. But if I'm like, if I'm, if I'm with it and looking at it and like playing with it and like trying to push back all the time, I like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to like actually get anything done. I wouldn't be able to live the life that I want to live because this shit is exhausting. Yeah. 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 What advice can you give um, all of us based on your experience and your performance? Yeah, your experience, uh, your experiences in life and your performances. Like, what advice can you give to us? Um, I... This is... All of this that we're talking about tonight and that I'm showing you is like evidence of like how one person chooses to, to move through the world. Um, and I guess I, I, I would just offer, you know, like find, find that thing that like makes you like light up, that thing that just like charges you, even if you don't know why it's doing what it does, but like follow that. Cause there are so many things that like, um, will try and like squash that and like, and, and people who want to squash that, but like, I like I need I need to I need to get out of bed and I need to like do things and I need to live my life because when I'm doing that and when I'm making these things and when I'm you know having conversations about this stuff like I feel so I feel I feel limitless. I don't feel like bound by skin and bones and muscles. I don't feel bound by like uh, like borders and like walls. I feel huge. And that's because like that's because I, I finally found some. <laughs> I finally found something <clears throat> that completely washes away every person, everything that told me that I was to this or not enough this or should try this. Like I am following my own drum and there is so much power in that. There's like so much light in that.
darkness is also beautiful. <laughs> what was that? Sorry, who said what? Darkness is also beautiful. I completely agree. Okay. Here's the last question here. Oh, cool. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> First of all, you or me. So I feel you right now. That just happened. Um, my question is, I guess, about career. And so uh, one thing that's been on my mind for a while now um, that I'd like to hear you talk about is what it means to have an art career now. And um, I, I, for one quick question. When did you graduate from UCLA? I graduated 2013, so right. a couple years ago. So, like, before, you know, having an art career in the late 1800s, early 1900s is something different than having an art career, you know, postmodern, conceptual, everything up to about when I graduated in 2006, and it seemed like everything had changed. And, like, what, I, I hate for this to sound so broad, but, like, being, you know, seeing the world listening to you speak, you sound like you've had kind of a almost traditional art career. You graduate, you get your MFA, and you're doing things and stuff, and it's exciting. Like, do you see it as that? Like, what your your career? I, I, I'm sorry, I'm not working so hard, but like, what do you take out of that? What I just asked, like, what would you what do you think about that, and how? Have, what having an art career means, what that's changed, and what's looking like. Um, well, I, um, I, in a lot of ways, I feel like I'm, I'm just starting. You know, like I don't, I don't feel like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm just starting out, um, and it's, it's only as a very recently that I'm. I'm like able uh, to see this because I didn't really have any examples of it growing up as like someone who could, you know, follow their heart and like chase their dreams and like actually make a living off of it and like do this like professionally. Um, so in, in a lot of ways, uh, you know, when I'm thinking, I, f I feel I feel very fortunate to be able to um, to chase chase the things that make me feel really airy and good. Um, I feel so fortunate to be able to do that and and um, uh, and begin to have moments like this when I like look out at a room and like people are here asking questions, listening intently. Um, and just like here with me, like, you know, like the career, you know, I need to like, yeah, I need to eat and pay rent and, and like pay bills and all of that stuff. And like, if this can help do that, amazing, you know? Um, I also, again, have pedagogical interests. I would love to teach. Um, I uh, have um, worked in schools. Like I think as an artist, like I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be doing like a lot of different things throughout my life. So like my, my career um, as an artist, like, is the, the notion of career, I think, for me, like, expands more and more each day because, like, like this is part of what I get to do as an artist, and, and like, this this fills me up. Like, I don't feel like I'm, like, clocking in hours right now. Like, I'm, you know, this is, like, this is my life. And, and my life is amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, EJ. In case you didn't know, EJ's website is ejhill.info. You can find him on Instagram at, at iHeart. Boys, but spelled like Joseph Boys. Boys. Oh, is that what you got that from? Okay. <laughs> We're also on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at at Pappy on Art. We're also there on YouTube, which is where this whole video will be tomorrow. So check us out. Uh, thanks for coming. Huge thanks to Michelle and Pappy on Art.